So uh, welcome everybody to Love Byte 2022. Uh, I'm your host PS. I have with me uh, two very famous guests in uh, size coding to help me through this uh, opening show that we have prepared for you to give you a rundown of what's happening at Love Byte uh, this week. And I have with me uh, Rjola uh, from from. Uh, the Czech Republic uh, is mostly famous for uh, Pulse uh, and a few other mind-boggling uh, size coding things that he has done throughout uh, the last couple of decades. And I also have with me Bazé, uh, which is a legend as well. And also from the the Slovakian Czech Republic. Uh, so I'm not sure if he's Slovakian or Czech, but we will be... It's Slovakian. So, uh, so uh, yeah, and he's famous because he did Tube from the group 3SC, which was in the top 10 of Puet for like decades. It was one of the most voted uh, tiny size intros uh, that happened uh, back then. I think it's still on the top 10, isn't it? So if it isn't, it just dropped it's nice. very recently. So, um, so yeah. Very cool to, to have both of you to uh, give us a little bit more information about size coding and, and you're the experts. So uh, welcome, everybody. How are you doing, Rola and Baze? Hope you're having a great day so far. Yeah, thanks for having me and hello to all the Love Bites, Love Bites followers. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine too. Uh, thanks for having me at Love Bites. We're very, we're very happy to have you. Um, so to start things off, we have a little section uh, just to introduce uh, what's happening in terms of uh, a love bite. What is the size coding that uh, that we're always talking about? We have this little video, so we're going to play it for you now. And please take a look, and then we'll chat a little bit with our guests uh, about size coding. Size coding is a minimalist art form with animation and music programmed on a computer in anything from 8 bytes to 64 kilobytes. 256 bytes is a popular size for a size coded intro. That's about the size of a tweet. Now divide that tweet in half, again and again, until it's barely two words. In the same space as a single HDR pixel, there is a hidden universe of creativity and mathematical complexity. What kind of visuals can you produce then? How much creativity can you unleash? Okay, so that was the video explaining a little bit what size coding is. Um, hope you're all clarified, but if you're not, we'll explain things a little bit more uh, as well. Um, I wanted to ask a few things uh, to both my guests, both Rola and Baze. Um, how did you get involved in size coding in particular? Because it's like a very niche thing. Um, there's this whole demo scene community around it, and I guess you initially got involved in the demo scene. How did you end up uh, in size coding in a particular? Uh, Baze, I guess I'll start with you. Can you tell us a little bit how you got involved with this? Yeah, sure. So as a young kid, uh, I first came into contact with ADP systems. And I gradually learned to program in assembly language. And then in the mid 90s, there was a boom of demo parties. Uh, and I was amazed to see all these great demos on a big screen. But uh, it was also the time when uh, the popularity of classic home computers was already in decline. And I didn't have the means to create like big PC productions. But some of these parties held these small executable competitions and I figured that this is something that could match my, my skill set. And uh, it was something that one could do on his own without having a big team. So I found it a good way to participate. And uh, also there was no real pressure because uh, people mostly saw this as a fun addition to the party program. So. Nobody took it really seriously, so that's how it started for me. <laughs> how, what happened with the 3SC group? Did you just end up alone one day you woke up and you noticed that you were... Yeah, the, the other guys there still kind of follow the scene when they have the chance, but of course 
the real life always gets in and uh, they are not really active but uh, they are still uh, at least passively trying to follow what what's going on that's very cool uh, Jola, what about you how did you end up in size coding well i started started also on on 8-bit systems particularly the ZX spectrum uh, and I learned assembly because uh, that's, that was the only way to get something running in a, in a reasonable amount of time. And uh, then I slowly started moving to PC and uh, have learned assembly, uh, the x86 assembly from, from a book about computer viruses with uh, all, the, all the source code. Uh, my first party was Fiasco in 2001. Uh, I really didn't know anyone, but there was a nice, nice uh, size coding competition, and uh, all the people were very friendly. So I started started uh, applying myself in the in the small intro category and learning tricks and uh, disassembling everything I could get my hands on, including buses intros uh, and. Uh, Later, I started uh, started uh, reading web and uh, lurking there, and I started being active uh, only in 2007 when there was a really nice intro by uh, Dimeister or T uh, T String uh, called Lochfras, and I I figured out a way to how to make it in half the size. So then I polished uh, everything I had. Uh, by the time and and uploaded it there, and uh, on the same year I started started going to demo parties. I actually met Basse on first time only in 2017 on demo bit. I believe we we didn't really meet me before, so so we we were starting in different eras. And uh, size coding is uh, most mostly uh, for me also what. Uh, uh, base set. It's it's an activity you can do by yourself with no pressure, and uh, people usually know me for for not uh, not meeting deadlines and coding something in the last uh, in the last hours of the party. So that's uh, that's uh, that's the amount of time you can you can make a, a tiny intro, but not something bigger. So that's that's also that also uh, this aspect also works for me. So that's that's about it for me. Okay, it's very cool. Uh, you both had like a spectrum start in your. Were spectrums very popular in, in Slovakia? Yes, yes, it was a very popular system. Uh, like I, uh, one of the first computers that I had was also a Spectrum, but it, it was very popular here in Portugal because there was a Timex machine mm -hmm. and there were some connections. But like most countries in Europe, they usually have a Commodore 64, mm -hmm. not uh, not the Spectrum as a starting computer. So it's really cool to see Slovakia having this uh, Spectrum origin. Do you know a little bit more information on why the Spectrum was so popular? Yeah, the answer I think is quite easy because uh, Czechoslovakia at the time didn't have like an official distribution channel for Western consumer electronics, but uh, the Spectrum hardware was very easy to clone. So uh, many people, of course, were able to buy Spectrum also abroad, but uh, it was the availability of clones that uh, made the system really popular here. Yeah, I, I heard a similar story from the Russian folks, and uh, the Spectrum is also very popular in Russia, and similar to, to things like, yeah, very cool, very cool. Um, so another question that I had to ask you here was, how do you deal with people knowing your work? Do you feel like there's extra pressure to, you know, always up the bar, or uh, is there a way that you figure out how to deal with this? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, Baze, I'll start with you. Yeah, I guess this is more Rola's problem than mine, but uh, it's true that uh, over time, mm, people kind of expect you to up the ante every time. And it's not always possible because sometimes there's just not enough time before deadline, or uh, maybe you don't have like a killer idea or maybe you just want to create something hot and stir the pot a little bit. So it's always, not always uh, 
possible to please uh, everyone but uh, I think it's more important to just enjoy what you do and uh, kind of try your best but uh, also considering the circumstances so I wouldn't say that you know that it's not really I would say necessary to um, think about this stuff yeah don't think about it just do whatever you, yeah it, whatever makes you happy uh Rjola, so how, how did you deal with uh, with all these things of people expecting you to do the the next pulse all over again well pulse was something of a special case because i uh applied uh, i uh, i took like two two weeks of of non-stop coding and being in the zone to do it so that that's really hard to talk also the uh, the uh, reception on the river wash. I think it was, uh, yeah, in Poland river wash was uh, was really really good because everyone was hyped from Gargai's DJ DJ set that was right before the competition. So uh, I I didn't think I could stop it uh, after 2009 and started started playing with new algorithms and doing things. Uh, that it, that were not uh, not released on competitions just to just to learn new stuff uh, and uh, la later I realized that uh, it's it's not uh, it's not that fun for me to do something very polished and I started releasing party coding things again uh, last year was something of, a, of an outlier because uh, because love, uh, I really really had time to make something for love bite so that was that was a lot of fun, but uh, I, I don't think people people expect that much from me. Uh, at least not not how uh, not uh, how much you think, because because I'm also known for all all those uh, all those misses that uh, uh, didn't uh, didn't make the cut, and I had to do something really fast just to compete. So I just uh, I just do it for fun and and have. Uh, uh, and have, have fun uh, finding out new stuff in in my my uh, in my platform. Yeah, I think that's the best attitude to have. Just try to have fun. Don't think about the reception that the, the production will ha or not have sure. uh, in the end. Uh, do you have any recommendations for newcomers getting into the demo scene or size coding overall? Is there the best place that you would recommend someone to start or something that you wish someone had told you when you were starting? I'll start with you first this time, Rjola. Do you, do you have mm -hmm. any insight on this? So nowadays, uh, it's it's really easy to find information. I would probably start on the size coding Discord asking asking stuff from people and uh, getting getting some pointers and there's also a size coding wiki that has that has a starter pack for anyone who really really needs really wants to uh, wants to look for look for ideas and how to deal with uh, incompatibilities and what, what are the basic algorithms that, that you can do also uh, you don't really need to start on on a hard a hard platform that is that is uh, shattered all across the hardware configurations like x86 under DOS. You can you can use uh, virtual consoles on or start to learn an 8-bit machine that is that is for our purposes fixed without without any hardware incompatibilities. So there are there's a lot of uh, lot of possibilities right now for for people who want to start size coding on, or just to learn their favorite machine from their childhood. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Baze, do you have any insights as well? Where where would you recommend yeah, well, to start? Yeah, well, one obvious recommendation would be to just download the works and study the techniques. But I have to agree with the Jola's point that uh, it's uh, I wouldn't necessarily start with assembly language because uh, it can feel a bit intimidating. Uh, maybe it would uh, first make sense to start prototyping uh, in a more accessible environment like fantasy consoles or shader toy. 
and then gradually develop your arsenal of rendering techniques and see where it leads you. Also, Fantasy Console is a very good place to to start into coding, especially if you don't have any experience in uh, in programming graphics overall. I think it's one of the best platforms on it because it's so accessible. You don't have to figure out like configuring machines, learning the old machines, having a real machine, or dealing with the emulators and the bugs that the emulator usually has. So you always have like something that you just launch and you could just play around immediately um I, i'm speaking about that because it's been one of the things that i've been mostly using to do some size coding for the last year and a half or something like that so i really think this is an interesting uh starting point do, do you agree with this yeah exactly that's a very good point uh, you can basically just start your browser on any device and uh, there you go <laughs> yeah um okay so uh, we know a little bit more about our guests let's move on and try to list what's happening uh on uh love bite today already we already uh, are uh, doing some uh this show the introduction to the thing after this is done we will have the nano awards uh and we will talk about that in in uh in a little while uh later uh we have uh, at 11 o'clock uh the bite champs which are going to be fun just uh, laid back casual people doing some tick 80 programming and then we have the night program at 1 a.m uh tomorrow saturday the 12th uh, we'll kick off the stream around 9 a.m around 10 we'll have um a year in size coding that i prepared with some help from uh, super Row, going through all the productions of the year in terms of size coding and uh showing them and talking a little bit about them uh, what is interesting about each different one of them so please do check that out at 11 a.m we have a seminar micro w8 size coding with exotic corn which should be quite interesting at noon, we have an out of compo uh, show uh, showing uh, entries that were prepared for Love Bite but don't fit any other competition. We ended up getting a few of them. There's this quest for doing stuff with flags because someone saw the flag of Scotland and they decided that it was important to size code it uh, and a few other stuff that you're, you're going to see. It's going to be fun. Um, at 1, a, uh, 1 p.m., we will have uh, the first round of the bike battles, which will also be very cool. And we will also be talking a little bit about that uh, shortly after the schedule rundown. At 2, we will have an intro show. At 3 p.m., we will have the rest of the bike battle first round uh, series at four we will have a very interesting session of ask us anything where people submitted questions for size coders uh, to answer when we have uh, quite a few legendary size coders who uh, will be answering those questions and hopefully you'll learn a lot of stuff over 10 coders that we have that uh, answered uh, different questions so um definitely learn a lot of stuff either if you're a new person to size coding or a veteran i think it's going to be interesting uh, at five in the afternoon we'll have the bite beat music competition which is another uh, mind-boggling thing trying to do music just shifting bites around um, it's going to be noisy i promise you that but it should be also interesting and mind-blowing uh, to see what you can do in 256 characters at six we have dj set by mibri uh using his commodore 64 to give us some uh, some good vibes at seven in the afternoon we have the tiny executable graphics which is a still image that gets rendered uh over a certain period of time, but it's just a single image. And uh, you have a limit of 256 bytes to generate whatever you can uh, generate. Doesn't have to move, doesn't need to be uh, real time. Uh, so you can take extra steps that you wouldn't normally do because you run out of processing power. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. It's the first time that we're having it, a love bite. Um, and it's like a downsized version of the 4K executable graphics that you've been seeing at other demo parties where usually people use uh, shader coding to do stuff. Here you can do it with just you know a regular assembler or a Lua or whatever uh, language you can 
used in 256 bytes. Um, at 8 in the night, we will have 64 byte intro competition, uh, both the uh, old school and high end uh, categories. At 9.30, we should have the 128 byte um, intro compo. And at 11, we will have the 512 byte also shared with the boot sector intro compo because on some machines, the boot sector is exactly 512 bytes. Um, those are the compos we have for Saturday, which will be very cool. Uh, we also have a DJ set by Bombay to round up the night. If you're feeling insomniac and enjoy some trance, usually plays trance. Not sure if this set will be trance. We'll have to stay up and find out. And at 1 a.m. we'll have the night program to tuck you in to bed. On Sunday, we start off at 9 uh, again, 9 in the morning. At 10 a.m., the second part of the year with size coding that I prepared with Super Rogue. At 10 a.m., we will have the new old school 8-byte intro showcase. I, 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 I'm not sure if everyone is paying attention. 8 bytes, it's like you can you can count them on your fingers how many bytes you have. It's like it's it's the number of instructions that you can give. It's like... It, it's ridiculously small so making a pattern out of that a visual pattern out of that is already ridiculous usually it's some sort of noise or some sort of sore algorithm but you will see what people can come up with and it's it it, it can blow your mind uh, at 11 we will have uh, the pico 8 size coding with super rogue seminar if you want to get started uh, doing some size coding for the pico 8 this is the seminar that you should be paying attention to at uh, 1 p.m., you have the Ask Us Anything uh, Part 2. Uh, then we have the Nano Game Competition at uh, 2 in the afternoon. Uh, the Byte Battle semifinals will be at 3 and 4 p.m. respectively. And at 5, we'll have the 256 Byte Graphics Compo, which should have a ridiculous amount of entries. Last year, we were flooded with entries. And I think this year, it's one of the compos that has most entries already submitted as well. Uh, 512 pixels overall um what can you do with 512 pixels something very small but you will see you will see what people can come up with uh we'll have a dj set by crazy q uh at 6 p.m i think he uses atari for that at 7 p.m., we will have a 32-byte intro competition, both the old-school and high-end categories. The Byte Battle final will be at 8. Uh, at 9, we will have the final compo block, which should be the highlight of the party. Uh, old-school 256-byte intro, Fantasy Console 256-byte intro, and the high-end 256-byte intro competitions. Then we'll have the results show with me and Genio and hopefully Super Rogue if I can convince him to show up. And uh, at midnight, we should have a DJ set with Lin to round up uh, the party. So that was the schedule of things that we are uh, planning to have throughout this Love Byte 2022. A lot of stuff, uh, as you as you just heard. Uh, now let's try to explain a little bit about one of the events that's happening, the Byte Battles. Uh, so where are the Byte Battles? Uh, to put it shortly, Byte Battle is you have 25 minutes, you are put in front of uh, a TIC-80 uh, running Lua, or whatever language you want. Actually, TIC-80 supports different languages but most people use Lua and you have 25 minutes to code something uh, within 256 bytes with a keyword and you're facing up against another person and whoever has the best looking effect people will vote on both of you and the one who has the most votes and has not surpassed the size limit of 256 bytes is declared the winner. We'll move on to the next round and face uh, one of the other challenges. We have um, eight brave souls who uh, have uh, agreed to participate on this edition of Love Byte uh, 2022 uh, Byte Battle. Uh, Byte Battle started originally at Love Byte last year. Uh, then we also had them at Outline and we had them at Love Byte Battlegrounds, which happened in September, if I'm not mistaken. So there is a small history of Byte Battles. People have known, started to get a feel for what is possible to do, what is achievable, what is not achievable. And uh, we have the announcement of who are the participants that will uh, be taking part on this uh, event uh, this weekend. 
So the first one that we'll have will be Lin versus VC. Uh, Lin just won the Bicham at the modulation party in November, I believe. And VC is an old, uh, old legend in uh, live coding. He participated on a bunch of uh, shader showdowns uh, as well and other stuff doing shader coding, not just uh, Tick80 things. But he likes a lot retro machines, so he's very versed in size coding overall. So it's going to be a very interesting battle. And uh, then we have Yobe versus Pestis, both of them from uh, from Finland. Um, both of them participated at Love Bite Battlegrounds, but didn't quite uh, manage to win because uh, Super Rogue just destroyed everyone in, in his path. Um, then we have Dave84 versus Pencilor. Both of them are relatively new to the demo scene. Uh, Dave84 thinks submitted his first entry at Love Bite Battlegrounds, if I'm not mistaken, or participated at the Bite Champ there. There, and then he did an entry at Inertia. Um, and then Penslor, who's been around on the fantasy console scene, I think he originally was active on the Pico 8 and now became a bit assimilated to the Tick 80 as well. So it's going to be interesting to check that uh, matchup as well. Uh, the last matchup that we have, the last quarterfinal, is going to be Totetmat versus Dresden Boy. Uh, Totetmat is new to Tick80, new to Lua coding. He has done some shader live coding in the past, but it is slightly different from from doing uh, Tick80 code. So let's see how he fares. And he's up against Dresden Boy, who is the legend known for making a dragon with three triangles. So respect Dresden Boy. <laughs> and he also participated in a bunch of other Tick80 stuff. So it's definitely going to be a hard matchup for Totetmat. Uh, let's see if he's up to the challenge. So th these are the four matches that we have lined up uh, for you on this uh, on this first round of bite battle um who do you have any particular favorites what matchups are you looking uh, forward to to checking out Baze, i'll start with you this time is there any particular uh, favorite matchup that yeah. you're looking forward to i don't have like a particular favorite but there are some very familiar names in the list and if the competition is anything like last year i think we'll have a blast because i found it to be super entertaining and to see how the effects evolve under time pressure, it, it's, it's great fun. <laughs> Do you actually follow the code as it's typing or you just check the results? Because usually I'm commentating and it's a bit hard to follow everything at the same time. But when I'm viewing, I, I don't know, I just don't pay that much attention to the actual code. I just take a look at the results. So I'm curious, you more hardcore size coding people, do you actually pay attention to what's being written and you see like, ah, there's a mistake right there, it could be shorter. Not really. I'm in the <laughs> same place as you. I simply just follow the visuals. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, Rjola, what about you? Do you have any favorites of these matchups that you're looking forward to? I'm looking forward to, to the Finnish matchup between uh, Yobe and Pestis because they, they have a really, a really similar abstract horror style, at least in my opinion. So I, uh, that, that, will be a, uh, that will be a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm also looking forward to, to what Dresden Boy has prepared for, for his matchups. Yeah, those sound like very good to match up, but all of them are look pretty good. So it's going to be really intense and uh, intense weekend of uh, of battles. Uh, do you have any favorites who do you think will make it to the finals? I'm I, I have a hard time answering this. I hope you guys have an easier time. So Baza, do you have any favorites? Do you think anyone? Do you do, you, said, do you have any instinct? It's a very hard pick, but. Uh... I wish all the guys well, and if they spend the last year practicing, then we might witness a great final. Rujola, do you have any favorites for the finals? I I believe uh, I believe that uh, maybe one of Lin and Visi could could be from the first bracket, and and uh, uh, maybe Dresden Boy of the second bracket could could be in the final. I don't. I don't really, uh, really know uh, Lin and and VC, uh, how, what they what they are doing in uh, Tick eighty, but uh, I've seen some of their their work and uh, I think it's uh, if they can get the aesthetics into 
into uh, into the eighty size code size coding in time. They could one of one of them could make the finals. So these are my favorites. Okay, let's see who ends up making the cut. Uh, that's it about byte battles. We'll stay tuned to check out we'll, how they will turn out. I think it's going to be awesome as as usual. So definitely much looking forward to this particular event. And uh, let's talk about the new combos that are at Love Byte. But at Love Byte, as you heard from me. Uh, going through the schedule there are quite a few different uh, competitions this year uh, namely we had a 512 byte boot sector intro competition that was introduced this year uh, the main category on tiny size goes is usually 256 but 512 has had some good quality entries in the past and the boot sector in uh, quite a few uh, different um uh, old platforms such as the Atari and the Amiga are 512 blocks uh, so it makes sense that we try to make something that fits that and maybe bring a few more activity from those platforms into Love Byte. Uh, then we have a dedicated 16 byte intro competition which last year was just a showcase but this year we had enough uh, quality releases that uh, we decided to turn it into an actual uh, competition very much curious what you can do with 16 bytes. Uh, then we have the tiny executable graphics, which is also something derived from pre-existing uh, um, format uh, that uh, normal PC uh, demo parties have, which is the 4K executable graphics, where you have an executable file and you have to generate a still image so no animation nothing moving but uh, the counterpart of that is that you have a little more processing power to do you know extra steps on the image so it doesn't have to be real time you're actually building up so this is a very interesting uh, category both for retro uh, machines for old machines where the processing power is really limited so we really need this time to add all the elements to draw all the elements onto the screen and also for more recent machines like uh the tick 80 and stuff like that where uh you can just do a lot more complex things um that might not be animatable uh, at all so a uh, very much interesting category and uh, let's see how it turns out uh, then we have the 512 pixels uh intro compo uh which was upgraded from 250 pixels 256 pixels last year somehow they felt that the restrictions were too small and they decided to uh, double the the amount of pixels but still a ridiculous thumbnail size of a thing to have an idea most most um most icons nowadays are like 500 by 500 pixels so this is 512 this is like half of that so it's barely an icon or a little more than an icon so and last year we had a lot of entries for this competition and it was very high quality stuff so it's definitely going to be interesting and last but not least we have the out of compo uh, competition which is every single thing that somehow didn't fit in all these competitions that we have and people still really want to show it on on the on the party or on the stream we have the out of compo competition for that. Uh, our normal part is called the wild compo. Here we call an out of compo. Um, and I think the biggest thing to blame that were some people on the Discord, on the size coding Discord, that started doing a competition on who could make the lowest byte uh, Scottish flag. Because there's some issue with the Scottish flag because it's diagonal, it's harder to write, or you need a special way to do uh, diagonal lines on pixel format, which will waste some bytes. And of course, it started some sort of flame war between who could optimize it better. And a lot of people started considering what other flags can we do? And so expect flags to be shown at the out of compo competition. But I think there are other stuff also uh, uh, included. Um, so a lot of interesting things added since last year. I'm asking my guests now, what compos uh, from, from this list are you most looking forward to? What is something that's really interesting for you? Baze, do you have any, any thoughts? Mm, I think executable graphics is an interesting addition because in a way it uh, takes the pressure off because as you mentioned, if you do animated effect, it 
can add quite a lot of overhead and uh, some techniques might not be quite suited for real-time animation. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this one. As for 16 bytes, well, there appears to be enough entries of decent quality, so this was a logical step to turn it into actual competition. And regarding 512 bytes, uh, this is a category that was requested quite a lot. So I hope that we'll get to see some new platforms or some new technological approaches. But also we should keep in mind that it's only the first year at low bytes, so I guess we shouldn't be like overly critical. Let's see what we get. And also the, uh, something I forgot to mention, the 512 byte boot sector intro thing is something that also comes from the Cracktrow origins of the demo scene because the games would come so packed into the disc which would really not give much room for all the little patches and trainer and uh, the little intro with the scroller saying that I'm the best cracking group ever in the world to be placed anywhere. So a lot of demo sceners back then in the late 80s and early 90s were focusing on doing boot sector introductions uh, that would fit like in these tiny spaces to use the boot of the disc to to do uh, the effect for for those things so uh it's it's a bit of a loop back to the origins of the demo scene where boot sector intros were a lot more um interesting known famous relevant i don't know the right words for this yeah exactly uh, it's back to the roots yeah. Uh, Rjola, do you have any favorite compos from these five new ones that I just listed? Uh, definitely, definitely the executable graphics, because, uh, for, for example, in my, in my category, that it opens the possibility to, to do true color, high resolution pictures that aren't really possible in the real time, or nobody would want for them because they would be too slow. But I'm also looking forward to the higher resolution graphics than last year because uh, because uh, people can can actually use their design skills and drawing skills without using without needing to have algorithmic uh, approaches to to creating the pictures. So these are uh, these are the two new competitions that I'm I'm looking forward the most. Okay, so let's move on to the next section that we have uh, on this opening show. Let's talk about some statistics from uh, from the year. Last year's Love Bite broke all records in terms of number of uh, submitted entries, executable submitted entries for uh, a demo scene event, uh, which was previously held by Assembly 94. So uh, decades old record. Uh, we broke it again this year. <laughs> Sorry about that. Too many entries. Uh, so uh, Love Byte remains the, the the standing champion on number of, of entries submitted to, to a party. Um, last year's record was 208 executable entries. Uh, this year we have more. We don't know the exact number yet. We also don't want to spoil it for you. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at some statistics overall and uh, talk a little a bit more about this. So... Executable entries per byte limit. We seem to have an overwhelming number of entries for the 256 uh, byte category, which is somehow normal. It's the most. It's the category that's more famous for tiny size coding. Uh, 128 bytes is also pretty famous, but doesn't have a significant as significant of an input as uh, 256. I even recall that there was a website dedicated completely to 256 byte uh, tiny size coding, which is still active nowadays and someone in the chat will likely post the link uh, as i'm saying this right now uh, there are some entries uh, for other categories as well as expected most of them are pretty much uh, balanced um, but yeah looking at the numbers there are not not that many uh, big surprises in terms of that um, moving on to the next slide we have uh, the entries per compo uh, 
we also have a dominance of the 512 pixel graphics similar to last year was the competition that had most entries so this year will also uh, take that uh, crown uh, something that surprised me is the difference between the 256 byte old school intro and high end intro because traditionally there are a lot more high end 256 byte intros but this year we seem to have been flooded with uh, 256 byte intros for old school platforms which is good we like being flooded with the stuff that will surprise us um, so very much looking forward to that compo in particular it's going to be a very intense competition um, other than that the distribution seems to be pretty average we have uh, some tendencies for the nano game for the nano game high end in particular for the fantasy console intro which is also um, a bit uh, really known uh, Dick80 got such a big boost last year with both Love Byte and Love Byte Battlegrounds promoting it so much that it's normal that we have uh, quite a few significant number of entries for that. And uh, what else? The 32 byte high end intro also seems to be uh, quite a bit populated uh, more than the remaining average, which should also be interesting uh, to check out. Um, some questions for, for our guests. Do you does this surprise you in any way? Were you expecting this uh, this kind of division on the on the entries per uh, byte limit and entries per combo in particular, uh, Baze? Yeah, um, I'm not uh, surprised that 256 bytes is the most popular one because it's of course uh, part tradition and part the fact that in this category you can be like more adventurous with your mm -hmm. ideas. The rest seems to be pretty much evenly distributed. And yeah, it seems that uh, this year there are uh, way more old school intros than high end intros. Uh, maybe it's just a one off thing. Uh, who knows? Maybe it's the fact that the PC guys uh, were busy creating smaller entries. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, familiarity could also be a factor because. Uh, uh, you know, if someone wants to join, maybe after some period of uh, inactivity, then it's easier to pick up a computer that you grew up with in your bedroom. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Jola, anything you would like to, to add? Is there anything that surprised you or that you're looking forward to? Uh, I was very surprised by the number of... Uh, of uh... 512 pixel entries because it's uh, twice as much work as last year. Uh, I also also think that uh, I, I also I'm also glad that people are are submitting for low low end consoles because uh, it's it's uh, really really nice to see so much love for their for their old computers again. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I believe that. Uh, the 256 byte uh, category dominating is uh, is because uh, there there uh, there were so many uh, there were so many intros last year that uh, there are three categories so people people uh, believe they can score a win in in a category with uh, less competition but uh, in the end it didn't end up that way and there were, there were just more, more entries in each of those. So that's, these are my thoughts on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a couple more slides to show with some more statistics. So let's uh, take a look. Uh, the entries per platform seem to have been overwhelmingly uh, dominated by uh, FODOS, as Oki would say. Uh, the MS-DOS, the free DOS, uh, both of them are combined and uh, seems to have a huge majority over the remaining platforms. Then we have the Atari with a very big presence as well, which was sort of surprising but also sort of not if you follow like demo parties like silly venture there is always huge number of size coding uh, stuff being done for the atari uh, the spectrum also had a lot of entries which was also very cool to see uh, which is also somehow not even though there aren't that many 
active spectrum people doing size coding. I can like maybe name half a dozen of them, uh, but they seem to have turned out for for uh, Love Bite, which is really cool to to witness and hope. But new people also showed up. Let's let's see. And then we had uh, the fantasy console Tick 80 being the overwhelming uh, majority, but also the Pico 8 also had quite a few entries, which is surprising since the Tick 80 is a bit more friendly than the Pico 8. Because he had that inbuilt uh, compressor thing, trickery that people have been exploring a little bit. Although I think from the efforts of Super Rogue and a few other people, it's also something possible uh, on the Pico 8 now. Although we don't have as much room for for uh, putting some code uh, as you had on the Tick 80 because of the header size. It's slightly bigger on the Pico 8. Uh, but still really cool to see this distribution. Also a lot of entries for the Apple II, which is really interesting, and the Commodore 64, which is very good, considering that last year Commodore 64 didn't have that much of a big representation. And the Commodore 64 typically doesn't have like tiny size intro stuff. They do like 4Ks sometimes. They don't do like 256 bytes for the, for the Commodore 64. It's not in the history of the platform, so there isn't much... Uh, of that usually happening. Uh, very much looking forward to see what they have done uh, for this Love Bite in particular. Uh, another slide that we wanted to show were the entries per compo type. Uh, not much to say here. High end, uh, slightly below the old school, which is a bit surprising. I was expecting high end to have more entries than old school. But that that's really good. That means that uh, the old school demo seniors are picking up their old retro computers and doing stuff for them, um, which is really cool to see. A lot of pixel entries and a lot of other combined. Uh, overall, not sure what else I can add to these uh, charts. Any comments about uh, these uh, platform and compo uh, uh, charts as well, Baze? Yeah, well, I think if you look at the distribution, I think it pretty much uh, corresponds to the current status quo. If you look at the number of uh, size coders per platform and consider also their activity. So I think, uh, yeah, it's not real, no real surprises here, but uh, personally, I would love to see more C64 entries because uh, the current numbers, uh, they don't really reflect the system's popularity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. A lot of activity on Commodore 64, and it's really strange. They don't really focus on a tiny size. They only do like one file demos. That's that's like the category that they they put for them. And we see a lot of like C64 intros that just fit, fit into single file, but we don't really see that much size coding. So yeah, let's see what, what we have at Lovebyte. Uh, Rjola, do you have any comments on these uh, charts as well? I'm really looking forward for the Atari intros and the Pico 8 intros because both of these platforms have palettes that are iconic and I really like. So I, I hope to see something awesome again. Uh, like last year and uh, regarding the, the amount of, of uh, graphics uh, I, I believe that uh, that uh, people people think the graphics uh, the graphics competition will be will be easy to do but uh, but uh, judging from last year I believe that the, the competition is at really high so I, I oh, I'm also looking forward to this this compo a lot. Yeah, definitely very high quality we had last year, and I'm very much looking forward to that this year as well. Um, do you have a little trivia question here set up by Super Rogue trying to catch you off guard? So um, considering the charts that you just saw. And considering what you know about last year, how many bytes do you think were delivered to the party itself? So, uh, Baza, do you have any deep, deep, deep knowledge or, or <laughs> information, insight, idea, clue, prediction? <laughs> no deep, no deep knowledge. Uh, it, it's just a wild guess, but uh, I'm going to pick a nice round number, probably around 32 kilobytes. Okay, 
Uh, Rjola, what about you? Do you have any any predictions? Well, uh, judging from, from my submission process, I think the total number would be about 100 terabytes when you count in the videos. <laughs> and if you include the you videos, yeah. <laughs> uh, all the, uh, and when you don't, then the entries probably won't be higher than, than 100k. But I'm, I'm okay. not sure that there are, it, it, should, it definitely uh, is getting higher and this is recorded beforehand, so I don't know. <laughs> Okay, I have a note here from Super Rogue that it should be around 50k of of uh, of bytes submitted, so below 64k margin. Uh, going also by the numbers that we had from last year, so let's see how that uh, closes up. So that's it for this segment dedicated to some statistics about the entries. Let's move on to the next one, which is the byte atlon. Um, for those competing in multiple size coding competitions, we will have a special multi-category event. We already had it last year for the first time. It was a bit of a success, so we are repeating it again this year. We will determine who is the most skilled uh, size coder, or tiny size coder, uh, through uh, four categories that you can participate. 32 bytes, 64 bytes, 128 or 256. We have a lot of compos at Love Byte, but only these four allow you uh, or count for the Byte Athlon. We will give points to every single uh, top 10 that is on the on the on these categories, and you'll get uh, points accordingly. You can submit as many entries as you want. Only your top most uh, submission, top high vo highest voted uh, submission, will get uh, the points for you. Uh, and uh, may the best uh, man or woman or uh, unidentified genre person win the, the biathlon for this year. Uh, Jola, you were one of the winners last year. So how does it feel to participate? What are what were your feelings about uh, the biathlon? It's it's really a lot of work, and uh, I I don't think I I uh, made for for intros for that. I, I just had a compofer for the 256 byte competition because all the all the other th intros took so much time. And uh, uh, Seraph was, uh, Seraph, my intro that was re really slight, it was orig originally supposed to be here on that byte. So the amount of work is uh, was staggering for me. And uh, I don't I don't think I, I uh, have uh, enough energy to uh, do the same thing this year maybe maybe I will prepare something beforehand for next year so uh, it's it's really really a good uh, good feeling to win something like something like that but, but the amount of work is really high yeah I was about to ask if you were going to participate this year but you already answered that tell us about the trophy was it uh, do, you, do you have it on a special place yeah. in your in your town because uh, in your house because I uh, I heard that it's uh, the same trophy as last year but uh, but it looked pretty stylish so how does it look live yeah it's it's really stylish and uh, it uh, it uh, is on a nice place among all my other trophies <laughs> Do you have a special trophy room in your in your house for all the demo scene stuff? No, it's just just one. Uh, it's just one. Uh, not drawer. It's uh, it's uh, it's just one uh, thing thing you can you can put things on and uh, uh, carry uh, and accumulate some uh, some uh, dust. Okay. Uh, Baze, do you have any uh, thoughts about the biathlon as well? Are you participating this year? Mm, I think uh, I, I think uh, I submitted uh, a couple of entries for ZX Spectrum and also for PC, so I think that would qualify me as a competitor. But you're going to have a problem because they are separated. The old school biathlon award is different from the high end. But they don't combine. So. Never mind, never mind. I, I didn't do it with a specific intent to participate. But I find it to be a very interesting concept because uh, it kind of motivates people to try new things and uh, to submit more stuff. 
And initially I was kind of suspicious uh, because I was afraid that it's going to be at the expense of quality. Mm. But looking at last year's winners, I think we are completely safe. <laughs> Do you have any prediction of who will win this year? Well, uh, unless Jola is participating, uh, I think uh, my pick would be Helmut, who's obviously very talented and especially good at smaller sizes. So I think he's in a good position to win if he's going to participate. Mm. And in case of old school platforms, of course, uh, Ilmenit is the defending champion. <laughs> But this year he might face some stiff competitions from Busysoft. Uh, so I expect a very tough battle between these two colleagues, actually, <laughs> and the two Atari and ZX Spectrum legends. We're gonna, we need to start forming like uh, fields of support in the chat, doing hashtag for Team Illuminate or Team Busysoft. And then th this weird person comes from out of nowhere and wins the other matches instead. And uh, everybody will be disappointed that they were rooting for the wrong person. <laughs> so <laughs> let's see. Let's see how it turns out. Uh, Rjola, do you have any predictions as well for who will uh, win this one? Or do you agree with Basse's predictions? I, I believe that uh, the, uh, the new school will, 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 will could be a close call between Helmut and Sensenstahl, depending on what they have prepared. And uh, I don't I don't really know much about the, the old school old school category, so so I would have to re uh, defer to Bases Bases uh, judgment. Okay, fair enough. Final section on the, this opening show, which is talk about the Nano Awards, which is something that will happen right after this opening show. So stay tuned for that. And you might be asking yourself, what the hell is a Nano Award? Well, you should be paying more attention throughout the last past months, as we were constantly mentioning them on several different media platforms. But I'll summarize it anyways, in case it's the first time you're watching uh, Love Bite. So what are the Nano Awards? Nano Awards are uh, size coding, tiny size coding awards that we give to the best productions of the previous year. There are other award systems on the demo scene, namely the Meteorics, but the Nano Awards always felt like they didn't quite fit in or tiny size intros didn't feel like they were being properly highlighted on those awards for different reasons it's not because of the meteorics uh, organization team in particular it's because it's really hard to compare tiny size intros like in terms of direction in terms of code in terms of uh, technical achievement sound to high-end productions that had like fully fledged or or have like 64 kilobytes in size so it's really hard to measure those things and the tiny size intros always ended up being like considered a technical achievement sometimes and over a bit overlooked on the other aspects so super rogue decided that we should have an awards system for those as well to give a bit more love to to the tiny size intro stuff we had a nominees that you could uh, nominate throughout uh i think a couple of months of on the end of last year and now we have a, a voting open it's the only voting that you can already vote on the party system so if you don't have a vote key you should get your vote key now and if you haven't voted if you do have a vote key and already registered but have not voted on the nano awards you can still do it now until the end of the opening show the votings will be open to give an award for the old school platform and the high-end platform what is the best uh, tiny size intro uh, that was uh, delivered last year from uh, the top of uh, five entries on each of these categories um so the winner of those will get these shiny little trophies that you can see right here in the front of your screen, uh, made of glass uh, by a team of skilled professionals. I, I It's probably made by one person, I'm not sure who. They look pretty good though, so uh, please uh, try to get one for next year, because these ones uh, are already going for some of our nominees. Uh, we have a video that will show you the five nominees for the old school platform, so Please, let's roll that video now. Enjoy.
So those were the five nominees on the old school uh, category of the Nano Awards. Uh, Rujola, do you have any favorite? Do you think we'll take the old school uh, award home? Well, I really like the Static Spectrum ones. Uh, my favorite of these is Glees. But uh, if I should be, if I should be uh, true to my heart, the Quarter Express is my favorite, mainly because it's a remake of one of my favorite intros on, on the DOS platform. So please vote for anything you like. Okay, uh, Baza, what about you? Do you have any favorite? Well, these are all, are all great works, of course, and it's difficult to pick just one. But uh, I have three favorites based on different merits. Uh, I like Quarter Express uh, because of the way it embraces like 8-bit aesthetics. I think it just looks cute. And technologically, I like uh, Video Run Filler because it uses a very interesting implementation of the Cordic algorithm. And uh, Gleased by BFOX uh, is an overall like nice combination of a very fluid effect and a nice soundtrack. Okay. Uh, do go vote, as I mentioned before. Get a vote key. Ask one of the organizers in the chat, either on Twitch or on Discord. Go vote for these uh, nominees. You have a few minutes still left with the voting open. But we also have another uh, category, which is the high-end uh, category. And we also have a trailer for that. So let's take a look at it. So those were the five nominees that we have for the high-end uh, Nano Award for for the year 2021. Uh, any particular favorites that you're going to think to take uh, that you it's going to take the award home? Uh, Rola, you're even one of the nominees. So uh, do you think you're going to take the award home, or do you? Th who else equally deserves to take the award with them? Well, I don't really understand how the code works anymore, so I can, cannot really say it's my intro. It's it's uh, it's it, it was done by some older Rola a year ago, but uh, <laughs> I really like uh, Blake Thirty Two because it blew my mind when I first seen it. It's it's a really it's a really awesome awesome effect that uh, that was packed uh, into only thirty two bytes, and I spent a few afternoons uh, disassembling MEMS by Digimind because uh, it, it also blew my mind when I seen it first. So any any of these uh, any, any of these would be a good uh, good first uh, first pick for me. But uh, also you should you should uh, you should 
you you should vote for anything you really uh, really enjoy. Yeah, it's really a hard category to vote. I struggle a lot with this one. My, I, I, I think in my core, I feel like Mems should win, but it's really so close, and all of them are so high quality and mind blowing that it's it's really really hard. Uh, Baza, do you have any favorite on this category as well? Yeah, as you mentioned, it's a very hard pick because all of these nominations are very well deserved, uh, but. Uh, I would say my personal favorite is Light Crypt because especially when you see it for the first time, it's got that visual pop. And uh, Seraph is also very interesting technologically because it uh, uses SSE instructions combined with a clever compression scheme. And uh, Blake 32 it's, it's also great for 32 bytes. It's also got that wow factor. Definitely. Okay, so that's it for the Nano Awards. As I already said, don't forget to vote. You can vote uh, still for them. Uh, the only thing left that we have on this opening show is to wrap things up. Uh, a little chat with our guests before they go. Uh, any compos that you're particularly looking forward to? What events are you looking forward to? To the party? What are the, what are the highlights of Love Bites that you're really uh, looking uh, looking forward the most. Uh, Baza, do you have anything in your head that you are really looking forward to check out? Yeah, I think uh, 256 bytes uh, is going to be very interesting, uh, as it almost always is. But uh, apart from that, I I'm looking also to byte beat competitions. And uh, I will also follow the seminars. Yeah, a lot of interesting seminars that, that are going to show up. Well, not a lot. There's only two of them, I think, but both of them really uh, interesting stuff. Uh, Rjola, what about you? Is there anything in particular that you're looking forward to? Well, people uh, probably expect me to look forward to the high-end competitions, and it's true, but uh, I probably, I'm probably looking for, most forward to the bite battles. To the executive graphics because uh, executive graphics is a really interesting category, which allows uh, to do things that I've always wanted to do but uh, didn't didn't have uh, the processing power to do in real time. So uh, from the competitions, probably the tiny executive graphics and overall the byte battles and uh, and all the all the high end intros. Okay, very much. Um, is there any compos that you're participating in yourself? You already mentioned this uh, before, but uh, summarily, can you remind me a little bit, Baze? Which, which ones are you participating on? Yeah, I've got four ZX Spectrum entries, uh, two uh, 256 intros, one 64 biter and one 32 biter. And uh, I've got also two entries uh, for the PC and it's 32 bytes and uh, 16 bytes. Yeah, you've been busy. Wow, so many stuff. Thanks so much for your contributions. Really looking forward to seeing those. Rujola, what about you? I know you were you, you're a bit tight on time. You wanted to participate in, every, in everything, but you didn't really manage to. So, uh, which ones did you did you end up participating on? Which ones are you looking forward to to seeing your work on screen? Uh, uh... Right now, I uh, only have uh, a 32 and 64 byte intro submitted. I'm working hard on my executive graphics, but I don't think I will make it because it's, it's over 700 bytes right now. And uh, uh, I will probably round, round, round it up with uh, something that is 256 or 512. I may, maybe finish one of my older projects. So. At least, at, at least two. <laughs> okay, let's see how it turns out then. Uh, that's it for now. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Rjola. Thank you, Baze, for being with me on this opening show. It was great to have you. Uh, thanks so much for talking with the legends of Tiny Size Intro Coding from Slovakia. So, <laughs> great to have you. Um, 
Coming up next, we have the Nano Awards in a few minutes. Uh, so stay tuned for that and uh, check out the schedule to keep up to date with what's coming next. I hope you enjoy a great weekend full of tiny things coming in big packages, as, as Oki says. Uh, that's it for now. So, uh, Rjolia, any, any last words you would like to, to share before we head out? So oh, uh, I just wish everyone uh, an awesome love bite and uh, vote for the Nana Awards, whatever, whatever you like. Okay, Baze, what about you? Any last words? Mm, I just want to thank you for inviting me and uh, I hope that everyone will have a very entertaining weekend. Okay, thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Have fun. Enjoy Love Bite. See you around. <laughs>